Today we're going to take this parallel schematic diagram and transform it into its actual circuit here on the breadboard. So how do we identify that this is a parallel circuit? Well, let's take a look at the current flow. Current flows out of the negative of the source, where it continues on until it meets this node here. Well, this node indicates a connection of wire, which means that the current now has a choice. Some of the current goes up this branch through R1. The rest of the current continues on, where it meets a second node and splits again. Some of the current will flow through this branch through R2, and then the rest will continue on through R3. When it leaves R3, it comes up to a third node, but that third node is a corresponding node to the second one. This is where it meets back up with the current that went through the branch with R2. Current then continues on where it meets a fourth node that's corresponding to the first one, where the current that went through R1 will recombine with the rest of the current. And now leaving this node, we have all of the current that will flow back into the voltage source. Since current had multiple paths to flow through, that's an indication of parallel. Again, parallel is two or more paths for current to flow. So let's go ahead and start building the circuit. I went ahead and started collecting my components. R1 is 6.8K, so I have R1 right here, 6.8K. R2 is 1K, so here is my R2 at 1K. And R3 is 3.3K, so I have here R3 at 3.3K. Additionally, you're going to need six jumpers, three red and three black to indicate positive and negative of the circuit. Now that we have everything we need to build the circuit, let's go ahead and start assembling. Off screen, I got my voltage source set for 5 volts. So I'm going to take my red jumper and put it into my red power bar for my positive voltage. And I'm going to use black for my negative voltage. Plug it into my blue power bar for negative. Let's go ahead and take R1. I'm going to put R1 and put it on the board like this, making sure that I put it across the channel. Because remember, the channel breaks the contact between the upper portion of the white section and the lower portion of the white section. So there's R1. Here's R2. And here is R3. Now our circuit isn't quite complete. We do have all my resistors in place. But now we need to connect it to the power bar. We're basically using both power bars as this upper parallel point for all the resistors. So we need to connect it to the power bars. So I'll take a red lead, a red jumper, connect it up to the top of R1 and into my red power bar. I'm going to do the same thing for R2 and of course R3. And then I'm going to take a black jumper and connect up the bottom of R1 to the negative power bar and do the same thing for R2 and R3. Now, again, it's very important when you're doing this that when we put the jumpers in that we are connecting it up in the same column. All right. That's the very first mistake most people make when building on the breadboard is they're not in the same column. So let's verify that we built the actual circuit. So we have our current coming out of the voltage negative and comes to the first node. So here we are. Our current comes in and we've reached our first node. Current can flow through R1. So current does flow through R1, continues on to this node, so we continue on to this node, 
goes through R2. And here we see we can go through R2. And then continues on through R3. So our current continued on to R3, through R3. So we go through R3, where it meets back up with the current from R2. So we see the current coming through R2, continues on to R1, and then back into the source. So we continued on to R1, and then back into the positive of the source. So there we have it. That's how we take a parallel schematic diagram and convert it over to an actual circuit.